Good morning, good morning, good morning, good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, good evening, good evening, good evening. My name is John Shakir Boydale Jr. and welcome back to my podcast, Darling, I'm Depressed Again, Don't Tell My Mother, where we discuss mental health in youth, the adolescents, the teenagers, the adults, the grown-ups, the children, primary schoolers, high schoolers, university students, college students, technical school students, once you are a human being, once you are a person, once you are breathing. We have something for you, right? So each episode, we have a certain word that ties everything together. We have a certain word that defines the essence of what we will be discussing. And the word for this episode is none other than, is none other than, drum roll please, confidence, right? Confidence. Yes, because confidence is a big part of mental health how you view yourself how you see yourself is a gigantic part of mental health and the case you couldn't tell by the title of this episode we will be talking about self-perception and the way we view ourselves the way we act and the things that we do that may cause us to be held back right you know so growing up i was not the most confident child i wasn't the type of child who would go and put themselves out there say i'm gonna go make a new friend i was very outlandish and i was to myself mostly because i had this fear of you know being rejected or being shunned but also because i just was so happy inside my little bubble and i didn't want anyone to come and pop it and i didn't want to pop my own bubble so i stayed to myself but it happened so whereas I regressed so much and I regressed in my social ability so much that it affected me as I was going into high school and becoming a teenager, whereas I didn't know how to regularly talk to people, which is talk to my peers almost. Like I knew how to interact with them. Of course, I knew how to deal with them, but when it came to like a friendship, being close on the friendship level, that's something that I struggled with internally because I didn't really know how to deal with that, right? Because it had to deal with my confidence or my lack thereof. When, and I've spoken, like I've spoken about previously in the past episodes, when, you know, you have all of these external sources telling you something and you begin to believe it about yourself, you begin to self-depreciate, which is what I did. I self-depreciated and I became my worst nightmare, right? Because usually when you have a nightmare, you a nightmare is a horrible dream, something that you think about or something that you're understanding and it's just inflicted upon you and it, it seizes you up and it makes you go all awkward and it, 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 it hurts you. Your nightmare hurts you. And I became my own worst nightmare. I never wanted to be the type of person who was so antisocial, who was a weirdo because they wouldn't talk to anyone, they wouldn't interact with anyone. I never wanted to be the type of person who didn't want to make friends. I wanted friends. I desperately wanted friends. Now, I wasn't looking for friends. That's a difference. I wanted friends, but you wouldn't know that because I wasn't the type to go and say, stick to everybody and be like, oh my gosh, hey, you're my friend. No, no, I wasn't. It wasn't like that, but I wanted friends either way. And I, that's something that I felt like I needed, but it was, it happened in such a way that all of my friends ended up coming to me, the friends that I wanted or the friends that I hoped that would come to me ended up coming to me. And I never really had a reason to step outside of my bubble because they came into my bubble, right? So when it came to my confidence, I never had to really use it in a sense. I never really had to go out there, step out there and use it because everyone who I interacted with came to me in my comfort zone. You know, my family, my home is my comfort zone. Uh, going to church, that's my comfort zone. Going to my other family, my extended family, that's my comfort zone. You know, those are my comfort zones. But when it comes to going out, when it comes to going to parties, when it comes to going to social events and things of that matter, I restricted myself so much that it crippled me, almost. It crippled me. I used my own 
mindset. I use that mindset as a crutch, whereas I don't want to go out and meet anybody. I don't want to. I, it's okay for me not to go out and interact with people. I don't have to do that to myself because it's just unnecessary. And that that was my crutch. I leaned on that heavily. I leaned on that heavily. And I didn't want to be that type of person. You know, I, I, I did not. I did not want to be that type of person because there's a vast difference between being introverted and being entirely secluded from society. And I have never wanted to be entirely secluded from society. I, I perhaps wanted to be introverted. I perhaps still do want to be introverted. Yes. Because, you know, I you know, I want to be around people 24-7. No, no, give me some time. Let me breathe. Let me sleep. Let me, you know, catch myself. No one wants to do that 24-7. But at the same time, it's still good to have a friend or two or what's not. And I believe that the primary reason that I didn't make any friends in my younger years Outside of school, because, you know, I wasn't really looking, I didn't really look for friends when I was inside school in my younger years. But I think the primary reason why I didn't make friends outside of school in my younger years, you know, even in my extracurricular activities, even when I would play baseball for the short time that I did it, or even when I would do anything outside of school, it's because I didn't allow myself to. It's because I blocked myself so much and I told myself that it was everybody else. And I told myself that they don't want to be friends with me, so why would I even bother? They are not interested in knowing me. They are not interested in getting to interact with me, so why even bother becoming friends with them? And in time, I became the thing in my way of developing meaningful relationships. I became the hindrance in my way of developing mean meaningful relationships relationships that actually mattered when it relates to platonic friendships. I became my greatest blessing blocker. And I was wondering the whole time, what's going on? Why can't I find no friends? Oh my gosh, I don't have no friends. I'm so lonely, blah, 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 blah. The whole time, it's me. Right? And you know, I was in college, actually. Um, talking about it to this to a person, and I was like, I remember when I was in high school, like I never really, no one ever really wanted to go out with me. And then they said, "Did you ever say you wanted to go out with anyone?" And I was like, "Well, now that you said it," and when that when when the person said that to me, I had to sit back at it, and I had to realize that. A major part of me, a major part of me being excluded in certain things was because I chose to be. A lot of times I chose to be excluded simply by making myself unavailable. Simply by making myself unavailable because I perceived myself as someone who no one would want to go out with, who no one would want to have fun with. So I became the person that no one wanted to go out with, the person that no one wanted to have fun with. Because it's how I perceived myself. How you perceive yourself matters. Your confidence matters. When you lack confidence in yourself and your ability to execute a certain plan or your ability to carry out your habits or whatever you want to do in your life, then you won't be able to do it. You are only as strong as your belief. Whether that's in God, whether that's in yourself, you are only as strong as you believe you are. And so, because I didn't believe I was that strong, I simply wasn't that strong. Because I wasn't, I didn't believe that I could be a fun person, because I didn't believe that I could enjoy myself if I went out. I didn't enjoy myself when I went out, and I didn't believe that I could be a fun person. And that's just the way it works. And a lot of times, it's a thing that we do, it's a thing that I do, whereas I realize I have become the thought that I had in my mind. When I was younger, especially when I was younger, I realized that played a big role in the person that I was, in my characteristics, in my behaviors, in my personality. Every thought that I had is what made me who I was. Every thought that I had. 
If I believe that I was stupid, then guess what? I failed the test. If I believe that I wasn't enough, then guess what? I would act that way. I would sit down with my head bowed down. I barely would speak. I would just act as if I wanted to diminish my presence because when you believe something about yourself, you become the thing that you believe. On some subconscious level, on some level, you become that thing. And it goes in hand with the scripture verse that I love that says, life and death is in the power of the tongue. So when you speak something over yourself or when you say something and you don't exactly believe it but you're still saying but you're still saying it you're still putting it out there you're right so you're still saying "Mm, i'm so unattractive i'm so stupid i'm so unworthy i'm so idiotic oh my gosh everyone hates me oh my gosh i'll never have this i'll never have that i'll never be enough i'll never want to be enough you are so right you never will you never will be enough you never can be enough Because you're not confident enough to speak life into yourself. Speaking life into yourself requires confidence. Because to me, confidence is simply believing that you are capable of doing something. That's confidence. That's my personal definition of confidence. Believing that you are capable and that I have the ability to do something. Believing that I have the ability to speak life into myself. Believing that if I say I am going to succeed, I am going to succeed in Jesus' name. Believing that if I can strive and do my best, then the best result will be put forth. That is confidence to me. And so if I perceive myself as a person who doesn't have confidence, then I simply won't have confidence. That's literally the way it works for me. That's the way it works for me. And I had to realize that my most limiting factor My biggest nightmare, the thing that was holding me back the most, not only in building meaningful relationships, but in everything in life, was myself. My lack of confidence, my lack of trust in not only my own abilities, but in God, was the thing that was holding me back. My lack of belief was my biggest restrictor. It was like this chain, and every time I would try to take a step forward, the chain would yank me back. Every time I take a step, another step forward, the chain would yank me back. Every time I try to take 10 steps forward, the chain yuck around my neck and it pulled me back. And now I choke and on and take a step forward. You see what I mean? And it, listen, it affected me for years. A lack of confidence, the way I perceived myself, I didn't, and For those who don't know, I love to speak. Speaking is one of my greater passions. It's one of the things that I love the most in the world. I love speech. I love speech. It's it's one of the greater blessings that God has given me, the ability to stand anywhere and just speak and to speak properly and clearly. And, you know, and (laughs) listen, I love speaking. I didn't give my first full speech until I was about to go into grade seven. Keep in mind, keep in mind, I love speaking way before that, but in case you couldn't tell, I think you should be able to, I have a lisp, right? So, people would always tell me, where you going with your tie dung? Nah, where you going with your tie dung? Now, of course, that's a joke. That's a joke. I can take a joke. I love a good joke. But the joke would come Sometimes the joke would come when I was seriously trying to perfect my craft, when I was seriously trying to train in my gift. And when I heard that as a child, I, I took that in. I breathed that stuff in. I breathed those words in. And I began to tell myself, oh, Lord, I won't be a good speaker with a Thai tongue for real. Oh, Lord, I, I, can't, I can't be a good orator with, you know, with my, with my heavy tongue. I can't even say yes, yes. Yes, sausage. What's a sausage? Every time I talk, what's a sausage? What's a sausage? And like I said, I can take a joke. I love a joke. But when I was trying to work my hardest to perfect my gift, to use my talent, and that happened, I ain't gonna lie to you. I ain't gonna lie. It kind of discouraged me a bit. 
it discouraged me a bit because I felt like it took away from what I was trying to say. My lisp took away from what I was trying to say. And so I didn't want to speak, even though I love doing it, because I thought no one would actually serious, take me seriously, even though I have a lisp. I thought no one would take me seriously. And so I began to act in that capacity as if no one could take me seriously when I spoke, when I did a speech. So I just didn't do speeches. Do you see? I became the thing standing in my way. A person telling me that I have a heavy tongue, they, they can tell me that, but they can't stop me from speaking. They can't pin my mouth closed. They can't shut me up. I had to be the one to make the conscious decision to say, I can't speak. I'm not going to speak. I'm just going to shut up. I had to be the one to make that choice. It had to be me. So because I chose to do that, because I chose to carry out those thoughts and make them reality, I became a step, I became a stepping block, or I became a stumbling block, say stepping block, I reach, <laughs> say stepping block, I became a stumbling block in my own path. I became my hindrance, I became my burden. I became my biggest burden. And that's what happens to us. That's what happened to me so many times. People told me things as a child, and I've said it before on this podcast. I wish I could go back in time and tell myself not to care because the thoughts of others cannot make up my future. The words of others cannot determine my future. I am the only, God is the only one, first of all, who can do that, and I am the one who has to act it out. I am the one who has to make those choices. So your thoughts and your opinions, while they start... <laughs> You can give them. You have a mouth. You have a brain. But I have to be the one to act on them. I have to be the one who decides whether or not I am going to take them seriously into consideration. And I took those things into consideration. I took them to heart and I acted them out in my day-to-day -day life. And I suffered the consequence for it. We choose sometimes. We choose these things for ourselves. We choose our curses sometimes. We choose the burdens that we want to carry. We choose to be our biggest burdens. And listen, once you put that weight on yourself, once you take that on, someone else can't take that off of you. Someone else can't shed that weight off of you. You have to make the actions to start to take it off yourself. You have to do, you have to start because you are the one who put it on. You, show, you chose to take on that burden. As sad as it may sound, that's the truth. That's what happened. Sometimes we choose our nightmares. There are times where we choose to accept what people have told us, and we integrate it into our lives. Sometimes it's a choice. So what do we do, right? What do we do when someone tells us something and our confidence begins to become shaky and we don't know what to say, we don't know how, well, how, how, how to reply? I mean, we, we, we start stuttering, we start, we, we start, we just pause up, we freeze. What do we do? How do you deal with that? How do I deal with feeling as if I'm inadequate? How do I deal with feeling as if I'm not enough? How do I deal with feeling as if everything that I does has no purpose? How do I deal with that? You have to begin to speak it into yourself. To change your perception of you, to change your idea of who you are as a person, you have to begin to literally say out loud, this is not who I am. This is not who I want to be. This is not what I want to develop. I want to be a strong person. I am a strong person. I am powerful. Y'all ever watch The Help with Viola Davis and that little white girl? And she and she say, you was smart, you was kind, you was important, or something like that, something like that. Begin to say that to yourself. Begin to say, I am important. I am confident. I am strong enough. I am powerful enough. I am enough. 
You have to change the way you perceive yourself. You have to change the way you see yourself because you are the only person looking in the mirror. You are the only person staring straight ahead of you. Someone else who has given you their opinion, someone else who you have based your entire concept of yourself of that person of that person's opinion. That person can't look in the mirror and see you. They can only see themselves. They can only see their issues. They can't see your struggles. They can't see your pain. They can't see your trials, your tribulations, your errors, your come-ups, and your come-downs. They can't see any of that. So they can't help you when it comes to self-perception and how you view yourself. It has to be you who decides to make that change. It has to be you. And let me tell you, confidence is a tricky thing to build up. It's a very tricky thing to build up because one day you can feel as if you've built a tower and then can someone can just come and say one word and that one word is a wrecking ball and it just, bow, your tower fall down. And everything you've built based off that one word has crumbled to the earth. Confidence can be a very, very tricky thing to build up. But you have to begin to fortify yourself. You have to begin to strengthen yourself. And something that I love doing, there's a... I love talking about my scripture verses, y'all. I love my scripture verses. There's a scripture verse that I love that says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Do you know what that means? It means that in my, I believe that God put so much effort into making us, into creating us, into molding us and perfecting us that his handiwork is impeccable. The only things wrong with you are the things that you create. As in the only flaws that you see, the physical flaws that you see, the inadequacies and the struggles, the only things that you think are wrong with you are the things that you point out. Or oh, my eyes too big. Oh, my nose too big. Or oh, my lips too big. Or oh, my ears too big. Let me tell you something. You are perfectly made just the way you are. You are beautiful, you are handsome, you are extraordinary, you are wonderful. But me saying that will do nothing for you if you don't begin to believe it for yourself. Me saying that will change nothing in your life if you don't begin to think that for yourself. I can give you a list of compliments. I can tell you that you are every single thing inside. The, listen, I could, I could do everything for you. I could do it for you. As a human being, I could tell you everything that I want to tell you. It will change nothing for you if you don't begin to believe it. That's something I had to do. I had to pray to God to help me. To help me. Just, just for help. I just said, help. Help me. To do better. To be better. Help me. Because when you see yourself as a certain way, it's a powerful thing. Society is built off of people, is made up of people who viewing themselves a who in viewing themselves a certain way have become the person that they viewed. And it has either been a blessing or it has been a terrible curse. When you have children, when you have children who come from different environments, and this is how deep it is. Let me tell you how deep it is. You can have two children who grew up in a negative environment, who grew up in a, in a less than beneficial econ economic circumstance. You can have one child who is told, you are nothing, you won't be anything, you are incompetent, you are, have no value, but they don't believe it. And you could have another child who is told the same thing and they believe it. The child that who didn't believe it and decided to just ignore everything may end up having a wonderful life and end up being a blessing to the world. And the child that didn't believe it, that did believe it, who took those things and ingrained them into their hearts, could have ended up having a terrible life. Down to that. Self-perception can mess us up so bad and we don't, we're, we're not even aware of it. We would just grow up thinking that this is the way we are, this is the way we're supposed to be, all the while never actually believing that we're only this way because we want to be. Because we want to see ourselves this way, because we want to see ourselves doing this. 
And some, some of y'all may get mad at me for saying this, but sometimes when we fail, it's because we wanted to. Uh-oh. Sometimes when we fail, it's because we wanted to, because we believe we're failures, so we're going to fail. We believe we're inadequate, so we're going to be inadequate. That's what happens sometimes. We believe those things, and so we do those things. It's that simple. It can be that simple. Believe it or not, it can actually be that simple. You believe it, so you do it. You believe it, so you do it. You believe it, so you... Sing it with me. You believe it, so you do it. Hey, you believe it, hey, so you do it. Hey, you believe it, so you what? You do it. You believed it, so <laughs> you do it. And trust me, ultimately, as a child... You can blame the adults. As a child, you can blame the adults because you're just a child. But when you become an adult, when you become getting your getting to your 30s and your 40s, <laughs> even your 20s, ultimately, the only person that you will have to blame for the way that you see yourself is yourself. There will only be you to blame only you so as an activity for you to do i want you to write down in a book or on a piece of paper five things that you believe yourself to be and five things that you would like to be and begin to recite those things every single day and maybe you will change maybe you may not but what would it hurt my name is John Shaquille Poitier Jr. and this has been my podcast. Darling, I'm depressed again. Don't tell my mother. Until next time.